you can also make a method protected as well. So we're going to use the same example here that was used in the variable protected modifier lesson. And so here we have the print my favorite food method, which can be used back inside of this main class. So again, we could say p dot print my favorite food, and we say c dot print my favorite food. And that's going to print the actual favorite food, which is called from the person class. Now, for whatever reason inside of your application, you may determine that you do not want this to be part of your public API. And what I mean by public API is a part of your class that can be called anywhere that's perhaps public. And this would be a public method, so we can actually access it publicly. Let's say for whatever reason, you wanted to only access this within the current instance of person or any of the children classes, such as chef or whatever. To do that, all you're going to want to do is slap on the protected keyword. And now this modifier was now applied the per print my favorite food to only be available from within this class and from within this class. So let's go back to the main file and take a look what happened. Now we can see that the print my favorite food is protected. So what does that mean? Let's take a look here and the autocomplete we don't see print my favorite food anymore. However, if we were to go perhaps into the info class, here we can say print my favorite food. We can still call it from within the person class. So give us a little flexibility here and also any of the perhaps other classes, perhaps if we wanted to set my favorite food and then print it to the, for the console or whatever, we can call it from within any of the other children classes as well. So now let's say that's what we want to do. We only want to print it when we set the favorite food for whatever reason. So we say print my favorite food. Now we can come back here. And of course, if we, we cannot print or have anything to do with the favorite food from a person perspective, because maybe that's just part of the given um, the way you're designing your application, but we can actually say set my favorite food. So we know that the person's food was ribs before, but for whatever reason, we want to change it now and change it to, to be a, a potato. potato. And so if we were to run this now, what we should see happen is, well, it's going to be set from ribs to potato, and then it's going to print potato to the screen. And we see print potato to the screen. And the reason why is because inside of the set my favorite food method, we're setting the favorite food to a different food, and then we're calling print my favorite food, which is protected inside of here. Now, of course we could, maybe there's no need for this to be inside of here, and maybe the, the food does not even need to be inside of here, which when you start thinking about it, perhaps the person, we don't need to know anything about the person having a favorite food. So maybe we just need to move both of these into this class down here. And this would both work here. So we're going to see favorite food now is not it's going to have a problem here. So what is it saying? Cannot variable variable cannot be initialized before declaration. Okay. So what we can then do here. So we've trying to initialize it before it's really been declared. So a couple things we could do here. So we just kind of go ahead and remove this and we could actually remove this as well because let's assume that every chef needs a favorite food. So to get access to this and we, since we're mutating it, we're gonna change this to a variable. So throw the var word on there and now we can print it and now we can also mutate it as well. And if we go back to our main class now, we've kind of cleaned up our API a little bit. So we definitely do have our person class and we do have the chef class and this will still run accordingly because the person is very kind of a, just a shell of an app of a, of a class. And of course when we print, we see potato. And what I mean by that is the person class just contains the name and the age. And it's just a very basic information about a person. And we've extended it using inheritance and we've created a chef and added a favorite food for that chef. And this chef may also have additional methods like cook their favorite meal or anything like that, or, you know, prepare foods. And as we start building an application out, we can start separating it into different classes, yet also having uh, values in here that are perhaps um, more uh, protected and the modifiers are in ways such that they can only be seen by children. So, which kind of brings up a good point that if you had a chef class, well, you could also have a class, you have a sous chef class. And this one would take in, take in the name and a string and a age and an int and a favorite food, perhaps. And this one would inherit from chef. And so we have name, age, favorite food. There we go. 
We'll just go ahead and rename this to fave food or whatever. We'll call this to fave food. And then of course we could have inside of here something else. We have some other classes and stuff inside of here. Uh, or, you know, you could actually, if you would like to, you could say inside of you're in a block for whatever reason you wanted to print something when it was created, you could do that side of here. And so print my favorite food is not accessible uh, to the outside world. It's not a public API. So I can't call C dot print my favorite food, which is a chef. I can't call it anywhere in the public because it's protected. However, any of the children classes can then still call this. So here person is just giving us some root level inheritance. Now we've kind of created a chef class, has some stuff around it. And then we've created a sous chef class that maybe has some other things inside of here. And you might want to have something like, you know, prep foods, methods and stuff like that, or something that a sous chef would do. Uh, and that's how you can create a method which has a visibility modifier of protected.